This is Debbie, and I'm back with a new episode of Offbeat Life, where I speak to inspiring individuals who took a leap to follow their passions and purpose. Today's guest is the incredible Megan Signoli, who is the founder of Visual Country. Megan went from being a freelance photographer to creating a multi-million dollar company in four years, a company which was started from creating short stop motion videos. Four years later, she has worked with over 200 major brands, received huge awards for her ingenuity with no signs of slowing down. Thank you so much for joining us today, Megan. I'm so excited to have you. Can you fill in the gaps of why you live an offbeat life? Hi, thank you for having me. Sure. Um, I guess a little bit about me is that I, um, I spent my life as an artist and, um, as soon as I exited school, I really have always been my own boss. So figuring out ways to live a nice life and like be able to travel and, you know, do all like learn things, like continue learning and do all kinds of things, but at the same time get to work for myself and kind of make everything around me work for me. Um, whether that be like renting my studio space or, you know, figuring out, like, I just, I've just always been kind of hustling so that I can have like time off and have a, a nice life. I know you were in photography and you were a photographer for quite some time. How did you get from that to creating visual country? How did it all start? Um, I went from doing photography uh, to feeling unfulfilled in photography, but not really knowing what to do. So I decided to kind of do nothing, meaning like I decided to go to museums. I decided to go to travel for a few months and Then I decided to like, you know, try to like change up very inexpensively my environment and my apartment and actually, um, and just kind of get away from the thing that I wasn't sure and just do whatever felt right in that moment. And with that getting away from it, it really led me to making videos because I was like redoing my apartment. And so I started to make these like little videos of it and, and they just took off. So how did it go from just fun to having these huge brands actually contact you? I mean, did they contact you or were you searching them out? How did that go? It happened right away. Um, within a few weeks of making the videos, uh, they started to notice because the, the following was growing so rapidly and just there was a lot of eyes on Vine at that time. I've not contacted any brands uh, we've worked with. At this point, we're four years old. We've worked with over 250 major brands, and we've never contacted any of them on our own. Is there a lot of changes that has happened since transitioning from from Vine to Instagram and what that app is like now? Yeah, I guess the biggest transition um, was that we lost 800,000 followers when Vine ended. Um, So not having this huge audience that we used to have. Now, was that one of the biggest setbacks? Can you tell us the biggest one that you've ever faced while, you know, creating this company or just what you've done so far and how were you able to overcome it? Um, I guess like with the losing those followers, there wasn't much to overcome other than just feeling sad about it (laughs) Um, because it didn't affect our company or business. In fact, like the things that I don't, that I dislike the most about the business, which is like selling space on my channel where I have to promote something. That's like my least favorite thing to do because I feel like, you know, no one really likes to see an ad on their feed. So we definitely have less ads now than we used to, but I kind of feel good about that. I'm happy that we're just making cool content and not, not having to sell so much ad space. Um, outside of like that other setbacks, I think we've been going pretty well. The the thing for me that's the hardest is I'm, I'm suddenly a boss, you know, I'm like, four years, it's four years in, but I had never really been a boss before. I had a few assistants, but to have suddenly 20 employees and everyone wants a different day for vacation and everyone wants different hours and everyone wants a different lifestyle. And, you know, 
trying to train people and make everyone get along. And it's, it's just really, really tough. So that's something that the last four years have taught me the most is just how can I be a good boss? How can I make this work environment a positive place? How do I get out of the day what I need as well and not just make sure that everyone else is okay. So it's kind of like probably the biggest setback in starting this company was that, that I didn't really have any experience working for anyone else or having people work for me. So I've had a lot to learn. So with, with everything that's happening, right, with you creating this brand and trying to live remotely and trying to also have a life besides just your company, how do you keep staying inspired? I have a problem where I don't like to stop working, you know, like I just want to work all the time and, and not be balanced in the rest of my life. So, uh, I don't know where the inspiration comes from. It's comes from everywhere. And like just this waterfall of ideas that I can never kind of stop. Um, and I think that's what happened with photography is that I was so excited to do all these different things. And then I just, stopped being interested. So I looked for something else. So I do think that that will eventually happen with what I'm doing now, um, where the ideas will stop and then I'll have to look for the next thing. Now, when you have those moments where you are pretty much just fed up and you say to yourself, okay, I was really in love with what I was doing, but now I'm just not really into it. What do you do to kind of get yourself back into it or into something completely different? How do you find a new inspiration? I think the first thing that happens when that happens to you is a little bit of panic, like, oh my God, it's gone. You know, I've, I'm washed up. It's like writer's block kind of thing. Uh, and I think the thing to do is not overthink it and just think like, okay, what has made me happy in the past? Okay. Dance classes have, or listening to music and singing or taking long walks. So then I kind of start to do that. And then I think, what else do I feel like doing that I haven't been doing? And then I go do that. Like, even if they don't make sense, you know, I'm, I've just recently gotten into pottery and there's no long-term plan with it. You know, when I was younger, I would think, well, I'm spending all this money to do all this pottery. What's the point? Like, where is this going to lead me? What am I going to make like a pottery studio? You know, like just like overthinking and thinking that if something doesn't have a logical reason for learning it, um, why do it? But I think not trying to think logically about it because your past is sort of whatever is appealing to you. Like you don't know what's going to pop up on your path. You just have to kind of follow your, your inner guide guidebook. I feel like everybody is really hard on, on themselves because we're our own worst critic. And when you don't find that thing from the get go, you always tend to start putting yourself down or questioning yourself. And of course you have, you may not have the right support or you doubt it even when they are. So it's true. It's just, you know, not putting too much pressure and just seeing where your inner self really guides you. Let's talk about your biggest achievement because obviously you have worked with so many great brands and you traveled the world and you're able to live this remote life where you can pretty much do you know whatever you want except when you have now that you have your employees it's like you're a parent right (laughs) (laughs) Um, so what do you feel has been your biggest achievement so far um it's kind of a funny thing I talk about this, uh, with friends sometimes about how we collapse like our, um, fears into our identity. So if you have a fear that you're never going to be a good artist or a fear that you're going to be, you know, really ugly and old or, you know, whatever it might be, and you collapse it into yourself and you make it part of you and you think that that's who you are. And when I was younger, I wanted to be an artist and, um, a fashion designer and I didn't go into it. I was like really insecure. I wanted to be a fashion illustrator, um, eventually. And I just thought that I wasn't very good. And now I, I just picked up illustration again, like after all these years of just feeling kind of in pain by it, you know, when I was doing it, I was in pain because I was thinking, I'm not very good. And when I was doing it, I was thinking I'm never going to succeed. And then I just didn't do it for 10, 15 years at all. I just didn't illustrate. And then I picked it up again a few months ago 
And within a few weeks, I was illustrating for Fendi and then (laughs) I was illustrating for Dior. And it was just kind of crazy because I was so scared when they're like, okay, you're going to, you have to paint this thing and you're going to get like day two. And I paint very complicated things. All I had to paint was like a rose. And I was thinking, oh my God, I can't do it because I've never painted when someone told me to paint or what they told me to paint, you know? (laughs) And then I painted it. I was like, I can do this. Um, And so now I'm like over it. I, I did these campaigns and I'm like, okay, I'm good. Like I don't have to do any more, but I just feel like I finally beat something. Like, I think we have a lot of these things in our lives. Like I know that I do like where I have like major insecurity or I just think I'm really bad um, when I want to be good. And I put too much pressure on myself and I just feel like I finally beat one of them. And then that means that I have the ability to beat a lot of the other ones. So that's kind of my biggest accomplishment right now is that I feel like I beat one of my fears. (laughs) That's a big, that's a really big deal because when we look at your life, right, obviously it's through social media. It looks really perfect and beautiful and we don't look at you and say, okay, Megan probably has a lot of fears too. We say to ourselves, okay, Megan is totally awesome and she just does everything perfect. And that's so great to hear because everyone will hear that you have your own fears and insecurities too that you beat (laughs) and you know having fear of doing illustration and now doing it for Fendi (laughs) so that's that's incredible so just you know keep that in mind everyone (laughs) um can you can you tell us what an average day for you looks like maybe examples of your daily routines or specific habits that you try to keep for yourself even when you're traveling and you're not rooted in New York I really don't have the most well-rounded life. Like I wake up and I immediately look at my email instead of writing down my dreams or drinking a glass of water, which are (laughs) probably better choices. Um, and then I really just immediately like get dressed and, and get to work. But the, the, some of the things that I do always make time for are any moments any appointments that I can keep with someone who will keep me in the moment because my biggest struggle is like not being in the now and instead like planning ahead or thinking about what I could be doing or should be doing. Um, and what everyone who works for me could or should be doing as well. Um, every week I, I talk with my therapist for, so, you know, some time and then I see, um, an acupuncturist and, I talk to someone who's like my mentor in meditation and she helps me, um, just kind of meditate and, uh, just those kinds of things, like these moments to make me breathe and remember to be in the moment. So those are, that's like really important to me. I'm sure it keeps you grounded and it keeps you focused as well. Right. Because you said you are always into the business and you're always working. And I'm sure speaking with close friends or your therapist and people that really get you focused. Money is a really huge hurdle for for a lot of people. How were you able to build an income from just creating these small videos and now having a huge brand? Um, When I started doing photography, I realized that I needed like a studio and I also realized that people were renting spaces in New York all the time. So what I did was I took a studio that was way beyond my means that I could live in. That was like really big, really nice. And I decorated it really beautifully. And then I rented it for other photo shoots. I rented it for conferences, um, you know, where there was like people who just wanted to have like out of office talks. So they would have like meetings in the apartment or events at night. So I was able to take an apartment that was super massive and amazing that I could work in in the day, keep it nice, like a showroom and then rent it and get all my rent covered. So that's kind of what I did for years of that really just like helps me so much by keeping my rent extremely low and having a workspace And then when I would go away, I would rent the space for even more than I was, you know, paying for it and more than my trip, my travels were. 
So that was also helping me travel. So like, I don't do it anymore, but real estate really, really helped me like having, you know, a nice space that I could rent for a lot of money. It really helped me be able to like travel the world and have a good life. Um, as for the videos, by the time that I started doing the videos, I had given up my studio because I didn't want to do photography anymore. So I was living in a normal like apartment, which was my first time ever, like living in an apartment with like bedrooms and <laughs> um, like something small, like a normal person, <laughs> yeah, like a normal apartment that wasn't filled with photo equipment and you know, whatever. So, um, I, and then that happened really quickly. So we sold all of our, like we got rid of all of our furniture. We either sold it or threw it away and, or gave it away and turned our living room into a little like vine studio. And I was just shooting with the cell phone. So it wasn't expensive. Um, and I would just shoot from in there. And then as I started making enough money, we were saving money and finally got a, a loft, uh, in another loft in the city that was also a live work that I lived in. And then by that point I had some, some employees, but it was like much bigger. And then eventually we grew out of that loft and we built this office. So we've really grown slowly. Like we grow one person at a time when we need them. We grow one camera at a time when we're like, okay, we absolutely need another camera one light at a time. Okay. It's time to buy another light. You know, we don't, we don't have investors. We don't, buy too many things at once. We don't hire a lot of people at once just to like rev up before the business is there. We do it. We do it once the business is is already there. That's when we grow. That's a really smart idea because I know a lot of people will buy huge inventory and start, you know, buying all of these equipment, hiring a ton of people. And of course they expect the business to grow and Womp womp, it doesn't, and then you lose all of this money. So that's a really smart way of growing your business is when it actually is instead of when you, you know, you think it will. What advice would you give to someone who is really struggling to find themselves or know what they want to do, but they're just really afraid to take the next step? I think when you're trying to find yourself, you know, similar to what I said, it's just like trusting your instincts and and just taking steps to do whatever feels right. But I think just having faith that it's going to come together, you know, something I ask myself all the time is what is the worst that can happen? You know, if our company closes, what's the worst that can happen? If, you know, if this happens, what's the worst? And the worst is never really that bad. Um, and so I don't know. I, I think that I could have saved a lot of like, pain in my twenties by asking myself that question so that I wasn't so filled with fear and also like having faith that it was all going to work out. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's a lot of that fear that stops us and we don't really ask ourselves enough what we really want. And we don't have a lot of that faith. Um, and it takes a really long time to find that I think for, for most people and you know, you're really fortunate to, to really find that for yourself, which is great. Thank you. I think also not giving limitations to yourself because I'm very shy Mm -hmm. and I don't like, like, I'm not like a party person. So I always thought, Oh, to be a successful photographer, you have to be a networker. You have to go to parties. You have to know all the right people. And that's not how I got where I am. I got where I am from just sitting down and like doing good work and like making things that I wanted to make. I certainly am not here because I like went and made the right friends. And I think when I've told some other artists that, that are struggling, they felt a lot better because we all kind of put that pressure on ourselves to be that like extrovert, you know, that's like the life of the party and that might not be who you are and you might be the life of the party and you might not be that talented and you could probably also make it that way too. But I think there's a lot of ways to do it. (laughs) (laughs) But I think you'll have more longevity because your, your talent and your work is, you know, you can only party so much and meet so many people. Right. And then what do they do if they don't like your work? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So what are you working on today? That's really exciting you. Next week, um, 
we're shooting with Bellagio again. This is our, I think, fifth or sixth time. Um, and we work with flowers. Mm -hmm. So, um, we, we got to like stop motion live flowers and, and next week we're doing like flower mandalas, which I've been wanting to do for years. So I'm really excited to be making some fresh flower mandalas out of, and making them in stop motion. I don't think that's ever been done before. So that sounds like it's going to be really beautiful once it finishes. <laughs> so now if our listeners want to know more about you and what you do, where can they find you? Can you um, give us your website, social media, et cetera? Sure. Our website is visualcountry.com and my social media is all under my name, which is Megan Signoli. Perfect. Thank you so much, Megan, for speaking with us today. I really appreciate all of the knowledge you gave us. Thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun. Thanks, Megan. I hope you enjoyed this episode with Megan. Make sure to visit theoffbeatlife.com for killer resources and so much more. Love a good audiobook as much as I do? Of course you do. <laughs> You're in luck. I'm giving away a free audiobook and a 30-day trial to audible.com. Visit offbeatbook.com to get your free gift. Again, that's offbeatbook.com.